Hey guys, and welcome to this very special edition of the American Contractor Show. I am your host, John Dye. And today I wanted to do kind of an op-ed piece and kind of discuss a little bit about what's going on in the world of COVID as far as it goes here in 2020. Now, uh, it's been an interesting year. It's been a really hectic year. And there's been a lot of changes that have happened in the marketplace in the last uh, six months or so. And we've watched a transition as COVID has developed from being just this virus that no one knew about to a complete shutdown in the nation to now watching as states begin to reopen. Uh, we just uh, heard that there was a state, uh, I believe it was Mississippi, that just dropped their entire mask mandate. So you don't have to wear those masks anymore in Mississippi. And uh, I've seen other states start the reopening process as well. But at the end of the day, let's be real. We've seen as this pandemic has spread across the country and has caused us a lot of uh, mayhem to not just our businesses, but life in general in the U.S. has been completely changed. And so what does that mean for us moving forward? What does it mean in the past? And that's a, that, those are the things that I want to cover today as we go through this episode. Um, this is purely my opinion. All the facts that we're talking about today are just my opinion-based stuff and, you know, where I am with everything. And I wanted to kind of do that in, in that term because I want to make sure, like, I don't get too political or this isn't about uh, the, you know, the, the merit of COVID or the shutdown or any of that stuff. That's not relevant to this episode at all. In fact, what's really relevant today is just the facts. Like, what happened? What did it do? And how has it shifted the way our consumers, our contractors, and the whole economy in general, it, it, you know, what has it done to, uh, to, to change our industry and change the way that we do business and the behaviors of those around us? And that's what I want to focus on in this episode. So let's get started. Welcome to the American Contractor Show, the show that's all about American contractors living the American dream. I'm your host, John Dye. Each episode, we'll introduce you to contractors just like you who have beaten the odds and leveled up their game to become the dominant force in their markets. Together, we'll explore the tools and tactics that unlock the secrets to their success. Join me as we begin the journey that leads to the realization of your American dream. So COVID, as we know it, came to be a, a really big topic of discussion about mid-March. Up until then, we were kind of watching it. I remember traveling around the country at that point, and uh, you know, it was in the back of our minds. We were watching it. I was flying around, and, and I remember specifically flying back from a trip in uh, uh, Salt Lake City back to Indianapolis, and seeing that's when uh, things started to shift pretty quickly at that point. The airport was definitely in a whole different state. I think at that point, the jazz players had just gotten COVID. And so, you know, the NBA was starting to shut down. Things were starting to get a little bit wilder. We actually cut our trip short a little bit to make sure that we got back because I didn't know what was going to happen. In fact, nobody knew what was going to happen at that time. And in all reality, this whole COVID thing, um, there's really not a right or a wrong way to have handled it. And I wanted to preface that. I don't care if you're a business owner or if you're the president of the United, State, United States or you're a, uh, uh, you know, head of a family or sales rep, whatever it is, living life, you had no clue what to do when a global virus pandemic of this type hit. I mean, very few people really had any clue what to do. And so I want to preface that because I want people to understand, like, no matter where you've been in the last few months, it's okay. You may have made some changes early on, and maybe those were good moves. And some of us decided to take the attitude of, well, let's see what happens and then make our decisions after that. And so, you know, there's two different areas of thought there. And really, in all reality, it doesn't, doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, there was really no way that we could have told one way or another what was really going to happen or how long this was going to last. Um, as the shutdowns progressed, we saw that the entire industry started to shift and, and move. And so that leads us to kind of where we are today now. We can all play Monday morning quarterback all day long and try to figure out exactly what was going on. But at the end of the day, like 
we are where we are. Your business is where it is. You are where you are. Uh, our economy, our nation is where it is. Um, and all we can do is move forward. And so we need to evaluate those, some of the stuff because I think that fundamentally business has changed. The economy has changed. Your, your customer's behaviors have been altered. Do I believe that they're going to go back to normal or is this the new normal? That's the real question. And I'm kind of of the opinion that we're going to see that for the next few months, at least maybe year or two, things are going to be a little different than they were before. And does that mean that it's a permanent change and that things will never go back to normal? We don't know. And so we have to uh, err on the side at this point that this potentially could very well be something that's going to be around for the next several years, uh, if not further. These could be changes that affect everything moving forward as we don't know enough about this virus or about future viruses to know that if this was the right way for it to have been handled. And so, you know, we're kind of as business owners and as contractors stuck in this in between, like, what do we do moving forward? How do we progress? What changes needed to be done in our business? And what things can we do differently in the future to help, uh, to help not have to go through the same pains that we went through during this last pandemic? So that being said, I wanted to review a few of the things that we actually saw, some of the resources and some of the ways that your business may have shifted. And there's a lot of things that have happened and there are a lot of things that uh, we could have done differently. But at the end of the day, like you are where you are. And I think that what this has done more than anything else is it's sped up. It's made the changes that were already uh, being implemented into businesses I believe it made those changes move a lot faster. Some, some examples of that I'll, I'll just briefly touch on, but uh, the use of technology uh, was definitely massively increased during this time, whether it be using uh, FaceTime on your phone to talk to clients or using apps like Company Cam and programs that are uh, much more uh, easier for you to share data electronically uh, or maybe you started to use your CRM a lot more than you did in the past and you learned to rely on that more as face-to-face -face interactions with coworkers as well as customers became much more difficult. Um, we saw that that digital connection became much more valuable as the COVID pandemic went on. And I don't think that that's going to change. I think that a lot of those things are going to continue on. Um, and I think that they're going to become more and more integral to your businesses as you move forward. Um, I know that for us internally, uh, we're not able to come back to the office yet. I mean, I'm working remote right now. It may look like I'm in a studio, but I'm actually not. Um, and we have a studio, but I've barely used it. Um, I've worked from home right now. I'm working uh, out, of, out of state right now, but I've learned to mobilize my entire operation to where it is completely mobile. Um, we don't necessarily, I don't, I don't view things as permanent as we did before. Um, and that's, that's an interesting thought when you think about the behaviors of consumers. When you think about the behaviors of your customers, what does that mean? When a lot of your customers are now working from home, does that mean that all of a sudden their house becomes way more important to them? Does that mean that all of a sudden now they look at their house and their maintenance completely differently? Uh, if you're a home builder, are you having to build more home offices than you were before? I've noticed that in the rental space, a lot of the apartment units now have built-in office suites within their own apartment. Uh, individual units now have office areas, work areas. Is that going to continue? And if so, what does that mean for the commercial world? What does that mean for the commercial contractor? What does that mean for those that are doing uh, work on these buildings and have long-term agreements? If those buildings all of a sudden become unoccupied, are the owners going to be as, uh, as motivated to keep them up to date? That's an interesting dilemma. And what does that mean for us as, as businesses? Is, you know, as things begin to move to a more uh, 
a more centralized digital world, what does that mean for the contractor? And I believe that contracting is always going to be one of the most prevalent parts of our industry. I believe that it's always going to be pivotal and very important to our economy as a whole because things are always going to have to be built. The question is what things are going to be built for the future and what things are not going to be built for uh, compared to the past. And our, our economy and our whole entire nation, our industry is, is seeing this shift. And if you aren't paying attention, you could potentially find yourself in a position to where you get left behind. And uh, this is just like any other industry that has experienced a shift. Uh, things are changing, the times are changing, and the world is progressing whether we like it or not. As business owners, as business people, as sales reps, whatever it is that we do, we must adapt to survive. And that's what uh, I want to focus on today as a few ways that you can adapt and a few ways that you can survive and not just survive, but thrive in such an economy as this. So a couple different things that I think are important to note. And this is, this is kind of an interesting observation, but I was thinking about this as we were putting this together. But I have a lot of friends that, uh, a few friends in particular back in Indianapolis that have just recently started their business. And um, they're exploding, like blowing up. They had record-setting years, which I know your first year and it's a record-setting year. But what I mean by that is they literally were doing numbers that other contractors can only dream of doing their first year, second year. You know, they were doing things that a lot of contractors take four or five years to get to. They were doing on their first year. And I was trying to figure out kind of what the reason was behind that. And I think a lot of it is, if you started your business in the year of a pandemic, think about this for a second. You start your business the year that a pandemic happens. What does that mean? Like, where are you starting from? You're starting from the point, it's like, here's the, here's the moment where our entire economy has changed. Right here, if this was like a timeline, and you were right here where the economy changed, and you started your business right then and there. You started your uh, car repair business the moment that Henry Ford and all of them decided to mass produce automobiles and horses were no longer necessary. <laughs> Imagine that you were that person. That's a pretty cool place to be, right? You're now taking advantage of this entire shift in the way that people uh, transport themselves, correct? And so that's kind of where I feel like a lot of these businesses are right now. Like they started right now where there's this massive shift in our entire economy. And so they're kind of taking advantage of what they know and all the tools that we have out there today. They don't have all this excessive baggage. Maybe it, it, imagine that you're the contractor that's been experiencing success for the last five, 10 years doing things in a way that most contractors can't do right now. Let's just say, for example, that you were a door knocking contractor and right now, because of COVID, people are less, you know, less apt to open their doors and, uh, and, and to interact in that way. But your entire business has seen success that way. And now you're being forced to change. It's much more difficult to change because you're being forced to change and to have it, this natural change. And so these contractors that are starting right now, I believe that they're taking advantage of the fact that we're, we're, running our business, we're starting our business in the, uh, in the economy and in the uh, business climate of today. They're not having to have all those bad habits. They're not thinking about the way that things were or the successes of the past. They're thinking, what do we need to do be, to be successful now? And they're implementing those tools and tactics right now into their businesses and seeing massive amount of success because of that. An example I'll show you is Facebook marketing, for example. A lot of contractors have been slow to the Facebook marketing push. But now, because of COVID, you're being forced to find new ways to find clients. You're being forced to do these things. So these contractors that just started, and they were key to that, and already were starting to develop a Facebook marketing approach, because that is the way that you should be marketing in 2020. Social media marketing is probably the most powerful tool that you have as a business owner 
they are at a huge advantage to the contractors that have been around for a long time. See, your, your success in business is your ability to adapt. And that's what we're seeing right now is these contractors that are coming in are just cleaning the house. I mean, they're doing, I, I've seen contractors this year, roofing contractors specifically, because that's who I operate with the most. And, the, and that's where I get a lot of my data from as we, you know, we, we, we work with a lot of roofing contractors around the nation. But these new guys are coming in and doing numbers that, you know, a good roofing contractor is going to do what? A million on their first year, maybe two. These guys are doing five, six, seven million dollars their first year, year one. Why is that? Yeah, they maybe got a little storm, but they couple that storm with the ability to Facebook market and to capitalize on the marketing aspect of it. And all of a sudden, these guys are just blowing it out of the water. And so it's a pretty unique phenomenon. And it's, it's kind of been fun to watch over the last six months how these businesses have adapted and, and which ones have and which ones haven't. The ones that haven't are having a rough year. And, and there's some states I know, like Michigan, for example, where it's been extremely difficult for contractors to do business. We have clients in Michigan that have had to completely shut down their files with us, and that's, that's fine. Like, we get it. But at the end of the day, like, there's states where things are going really well, and there's other states where things are just because of the legal ramifications, uh, things have, have been extremely difficult for them. Uh, we have other factors as well that are at play in 2020 that haven't been in pl at play in years past. But material pricing, we had an extreme uh, spike in costs this year in some areas that we weren't expecting. I've seen lumber prices go through the roof. Uh, OSB boards are through the roof right now. The shingle manufacturers, this is a unique area as well. We saw within the first week of the shutdowns, the shingle manufacturers weren't able to run their plants. So what happened? The material started to go on the allocation. They started to have to uh, really condense where their material was and what, uh, what amounts of material they had. And so it's changed, uh, you know, in some contractors that made a big difference for them. It also, the, the, once they did come back online, the demand was so high that what happens with the general supply and demand rules of business? the price went up. And so we've watched as the pricing has changed significantly over the last few months and the spikes in, uh, you know, have been much higher than we've seen in years past. And so a lot of businesses have had to adapt to that reality as well throughout all of this. And so it's been a really uh, interesting six months that we've seen just some major changes in business, some major changes in the way that business is operated, and some things that are being done now that weren't done that way before. And so it's, it's one of those times where it, it behooves us to, as contractors to really sharpen our pencil and figure out exactly how to rethink this whole contracting game. And that's where, uh, you know, the guys that were doing the wait and see attitude, let's see what happens. This might work, this might not, this might be a lasting thing, this might not. You guys may be a little bit behind right now, and it's time to play catch up. And that's okay. The cool thing about these types of years, in my opinion, is that they teach us a lot. They give us opportunities to grow in areas that we weren't expecting to grow. It gives us opportunities to test our business models and test what we've been building for the last several years. Does it work? Is that model correct or not? A good friend of mine, Hunter Ballou, said that. Uh, I remember early on, we were, uh, he came to Indianapolis like the week that the shutdown started, you know, right before the shutdowns really hit, he was in our office and, you know, he said to me, he said, John, you know, I really feel like this is a phenomenal opportunity for my business model to be tested. I haven't been tested before. I want to know how it does. And looking through his numbers and kind of what his business is doing, they've done very well. Their test has shown that their business model does work, and they've actually opened new offices. I think they have an office in Arkansas now. They have an office in uh, uh, Louisiana. They opened one in Gulf Shores because of the hurricane. And so things have changed. Now, when it comes to insurance work, since we're talking about hurricanes, that's been a whole different world this year. You know, in years past, we've been kind of been, we, we've understood how this, 
this insurance thing works for the most part. Uh, you know, we teach these classes and people come and they learn how to become better at it. But at the end of the day, it's all been about the same. Uh, but this year, it's been completely different. When you look at how, how contractors have had to adjust when they met with, con when, with adjusters, uh, when they met with the, the different insurance representatives, it, it's not the same as it was in years past. In years past, you know, the, the whole no contact thing has made it much more difficult for a contractor to meet with an adjuster like they did it before. Now they, they, they basically are forced to submit more data, which forces the contractor to do a, a much more comprehensive job of documenting these uh, the damaged properties. As a storm contractor, you should be doing that already, but now you're being forced to do it the correct way from the very get-go, which is a, a little bit of a surprise for some of the contractors that have been doing this for a long time. But let's remember, guys, like change happens. It's always going to be here. Uh, it's not going to stop. Progress is not going to end. Guys, I remember when we started in this industry in 2000, and uh, Xactimate was, you know, Xactimate had been around for a while, but Xactimate wasn't something that a contractor typically used. But now today, it's something that if you're an insurance contractor, you use Xactimate all the time. Photos. We didn't take a whole lot of photos back then, but today we take a lot of photos. We didn't have all the tools that we have today, and it's changed the entire industry over and over and over again over the years and it's going to continue to do that progress is going to continue to happen things are going to continue to change so what does it mean you should be able to evaluate right now how pliable your business really is you should be able to evaluate right now where you stand today based on where you were for as far as your goals were set for 2020 if you set goals in january I guarantee you, you didn't uh, have a line item in there for, well, if the COVID virus it becomes a global pandemic that shuts down the entire economy, this is our adjusted goal. <laughs> I don't think that actually happened. If you did have that, please tell me, because I'd love to hear uh, where you came up with that and, and how, the, how you came to that conclusion. But for most people, that wasn't the case. For most people, it was, this is what our, our goals are set. We've set this based on trends in the past and now we're trending this direction. This is what we should see moving forward. And so as this has all progressed, as things have changed, we're now left with the future. What does the future look like? What does the future mean? Uh, what, what, is it, what are we gonna see in the contracting space over the next few years? What things should you guys be doing? In my opinion, our future looks great. It's just gonna be different. It's going to change. And the way that the economy uh, really reacts and the way that things play out over the next few months is really going to dictate what's going to happen. Uh, I was recently in Bentonville, Arkansas, uh, you know, large corporations there. And I was talking to some of my friends that work for some large corporations that operate out of Bentonville. And they're not going back to the office. They're working from home. What does that mean for uh, those people that rely on going to work every day they're having to stay home every day are they going to do more projects on their house because they're living in their house or is their change in lifestyle going to demand that certain products be done or certain uh, elements of their home be changed to better fit their lifestyle understand this contractors we build things that people live in we build things that people work in we work on things that people use. If they didn't use it, it wouldn't need to be built, correct? If it wasn't useful, you're probably, you know, it's, it's probably something that's just a want. So let's talk about needs for a second. What is the need of the next generation? What is the need of the future of, uh, of our industry? The needs are going to be what? They're going to need a place to work and a, and a place to live. And those places are going to probably have to be the same. So the place that you would traditionally have gone to work may not exist. You may want to think about that in the future as we continue to progress. How are you going to communicate with uh, homeowners and policyholders and, 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 and insurance companies and all the different elements that you guys currently have to communicate with face-to-face -face and you're not able to do those face-to-face -face communications? What does that mean? If the nation decides to, uh, the government decides to shut down the entire economy again, what does that mean for your business? 
Are you better prepared now for that than you were six months ago? I sure hope you are. And I think a lot of contractors definitely are. But the question remains, if you're not, what are you doing to do that? I recommend that you research your CRMs, research the, the, the tools that are out there, learn about company cam and, and Acculinks and uh, Builder Trend and all these tools that are available, Giddy Up, Job Nimbus. Get and start building strategies that are conducive to 2020 environment. We don't know what that means, but now we have somewhat of an idea of what a 2020 <laughs> a strategy should look like. Go back and write a strategy based on what you should do differently because of a pandemic like this. Write a strategy based on, okay, it's January 2020. I know that a pandemic is coming. What do I do differently in my business? How quickly can we adapt? If you can't adapt quickly, then you need to figure out why you can't adapt quickly. Some contractors I know this year, they stock their own shingles. Price increase, not a big deal. I got a million dollars of shingles sitting out in my yard. Were they smart? A lot of people probably were like, man, why would a contractor do that? I actually know people that have said that. And I'm like, dude, that's one of the smartest things I've ever heard. If you, can, if you have the ability and the, uh, the financial power to do that, that's a good move. And it paid off handsomely this year. Uh, and so think about things like that. How can you operate differently to shield yourself better from such things? Guys, I really appreciate you guys watching this today. And just like always, the American Contractor Show is here for you. I hope that this helps you think a little differently and hopefully give you guys some better perspective on things. As you move into 2021, we wrap up the fourth quarter this year and you get some time to take some time and reflect on your business, reflect on the decisions that you made, reflect on, on how things operated and how things went, figure out what you did right, what you did wrong, learn from 2020. I believe that if you were to the most, take the most positive aspect of 2020 and, and, and put it in one sentence, you know, I think the best, or one word, for example, I think it is learning. This is education. This is the year of education. I've always been told you have, uh, you always pay for your education. It never comes free. You either pay for it through trial and error, or and you still got to pay for it. It still costs you money because those mistakes cost money, or you pay for it by going to school. Uh, but at the end of the day, no matter how, you end up paying for your education. 2020 was the year of reckoning for a lot of people to pay and learn and make mistakes that cost you money and cost you time and are going to ultimately take you into the future as a much stronger contractor and a much stronger person. To 2021, guys, this is the end of 2020 and I'm excited about it and I'll see you guys soon. Are you doing something unique, innovative, or just plain cool with your contracting business and want to show off a little bit? We'd love to hear from you. Send us an email at showcase at americancontractorshow.com and let us know what you're up to. We'd love to hear from you and maybe we'll feature you on a future episode.